I'm just here at the reverse art track at Nary Warren. I'm going in now to see Cam. Cam, you there? Yes, yes. Here he goes. <laughs> hey, Cam. Hi. Nice to meet you. you can I come in? You certainly can. Awesome. I'm Glenn. Hi, Glenn. How are you going? Cam. Cam, I just firstly, just know I'm going to be recording this. It uh, might go out on some social media sites and things. I hope that's okay. Yes. All right. So I'm here with Cam at RAT. Now, Cam, firstly, what is RAT? Uh, RAT is uh, a not-for-profit. Uh, we have a truck that we drive around to um, industry, to all sorts of different places to collect uh, overs, um, you know, cutouts, bits and pieces that would otherwise go to landfill. Um, and we stock up our cardboard drums in our two stores uh, with these things, and it uh, provides a... Um, I would say an abundant, low-cost resource that's quite useful in education in arts. Uh, quite often when you're doing something creative, uh, it's great to have something that's abundant and something that has perceived low cost, because uh, that often unlocks creativity that you didn't necessarily have earlier. Uh, one of our little jobs is to just provide as wide a range as possible. So when you come into the store, uh, we like to think of it being a little bit like coming into Aladdin's cave. and you know, you might come around a corner and find three or four things that look pretty, um, that, that maybe to anyone else wouldn't have a use, but just the particular shape of it or the particular material it's made from uh, means that you can use it. Uh, in education, it's quite useful, particularly in early years, because you're often working with um, the idea of providing kids with as many different shapes and as many different materials as you can. So, uh, one thing that a lot of early years teachers do is they provide either outdoor or indoor loose parts, which is like a concept where you can physically move things around the space. Uh, you can join them together or move them apart. Um, you can sort of create your own um, uh, solutions to, um, like for instance, if you're building a road, then you can find things that fit the road sort of concept for you. Uh, so you're solving technological challenges in a way. Understood. Um, so, you know, if they're putting together an indoor loose parts, for instance, they might grab one of our bin bags uh, and because we shop on volume rather than items uh, and fill it with things that would fit, you know, in a container in a classroom that could just be put out on the floor. So it could be buttons, uh, in which case the kids are maybe playing with pattern and things like that, which is mathematical. So they're addressing all sorts of um, curriculum outcomes without being conscious that that's what they're doing. They're just having a play, um, which is a pretty important part of particularly early years education, but I would argue education all the way through. Um, and and so, yeah, they, they the different shapes and sizes of materials and things like that uh, offer the kids a real range of things they can do and they can use them up, they can break them, and it just really doesn't matter because they're, they're pretty low cost. So, RAT, where did that come from? What does it stand for? Uh, What's a right. bit of the history yeah, yeah. about it? Okay, so many, I think the... I think Can the, I ask, sorry, indirect? Yeah, yeah. What is RAT? What's it mean? What's it well, stand for? It's, it stands for Reverse Art Truck. Yep. Um, I think it possibly was about 30, possibly even 40 years ago, uh, a group of people got together and decided that we needed a scrap store in yep. Melbourne. And I think at the time it was in Footscray. Um, it's since moved several times and people come in from time to time and tell me, um, you know, oh, I remember when this was, you know, wherever it was. I think it was in a hen shed at the back of someone's house at one mm. point in Croydon or something. Because like we that. used to go down to the rubbish tips and sort through yeah, all well, the stuff right. and yeah, well, that's bring the, back bits of yeah, metal. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. We, we curate it a little bit more than... Uh, Keep it tidy, yeah, tidy yeah, and healthy. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've got a, 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 a couple of different... Um, businesses that I run and organisations that I run and uh, Reverse Art Truck is um, I think probably you know it's 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 one of those things I think that's really doing some good not just obviously you know we're removing stuff from landfill but also providing um, opportunities for, for teachers and artists in Melbourne to you know get qu quite cheap uh, resources and um, it's a, an eclectic mix of stuff too. Oh, I totally. mean, there's there's yeah. a lot of yeah. little bits and bobs, as yeah. you were saying, yeah. so we, from we, little bowlers and we actively go out and try and yeah mix it up as much as we can. So where do you source from? 
Uh, lots of different industries. So, you know, Melbourne still has industry, thank goodness. Um, importing. Um, do people come to you or do you have to yeah, go out and no, attack we, it? No, because we've been around for so long, people yeah. look us up and, and come out with things um, yeah. because the concept, um, I think, has probably been around in the background uh, for, for quite some time. People look for that, um, you know, if it's not good enough to send to charity, uh, if it's or, or doesn't fit. In a, in a sort of charity shop situation. Um, if it's too good to throw into landfill, then you know we're the sort of intermediary before that step. So um, I was, a few weeks ago, I was looking at doing a pointillism piece and I thought, how can I make this something fun? And I started mm. thinking about bottle caps, bottle yep. tops, the blue bottle top. Mm. So is that something that you would totally. be providing? Yeah, yeah, as long as they're clean. We've had them yeah. in the past, we've opened them up and just got this waft of milk uh, which isn't very, which isn't very nice. We can't use those, but yeah, as long as things are clean and, and ordered to some degree. Um, is yeah. it your business? Did it's, you found I'm, it? I'm the What's CEO. I did here? not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, Reverse Art Truck Inc. Uh, when it first started was Reverse Garbage, yep. um, and Reverse Garbage I think spread uh, around Australia. Hopefully um, not diseases. No, no, not diseases. <laughs> no, no. Well, I think that was part of the the reason why they changed it to reverse art truck yeah, was I the, couldn't the agree concept. More. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Sydney, there's still reverse garbage, and I yeah. think there are a couple of reverse garbages around the place, including I think there's one up at Brisbane as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a concept that sort of came, I think, when you know after the Second World War, a lot of things happened in the UK that have sort of come through to Australia, Great. and yeah. I think that that's where the scrap store concept has come yeah. from. Um, since its sort of inception of just providing art and craft things, it's also, you know, in the UK and now in Australia, we also do outdoor loose parts. So oh, you're that's good, that's like great. A, yeah, 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 it's like a shipping container that, that uh, is in a primary school playground and the kids just, you know, it's an alternative to sports equipment or kids play equipment and it just means that kids can, um, you know, there's a, there's a greater degree, I think, of, of creative play that comes from just an object that doesn't really have a, a use other than what the kids start to use it for um, and so yeah we've started to specialize a little bit in that um, I well just over a year ago I was involved in loose parts through my company um, and I looked around to see if anyone else was doing it in Victoria and this place called reverse art truck was doing it in Victoria and a guy called Rob Van Oz was yes. uh, running it um, so I went down and introduced myself and we got along really, really well. We went and, you know, did some work together, did some delivering of, of parts together. And um, he, uh, at the end of the, um, at the end of the, the day of delivering the loose parts, he said, oh, I'll probably retire in five or six years, so give me a call. Uh, and I said, well, okay, yeah, that sounds good. You know, I'm not a competitive person. I'm always looking for some way that I can collaborate with people. So. I was sort of thinking that we'd collaborate for a bit and then slowly might, you know, if that was still something that he wanted to do, he might pass the organisation on to me. Uh, two weeks later, he gave me a call and said that he was dying of pancreatic cancer. Oh, dreadful and news. he was gone within two weeks. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. That's a yeah. quick quick turnaround. So suddenly it? I had not just my own business that I was running, but Another also, thing. yeah, this, um, sort of, it's quite a, quite a, a, a large not-for-profit organisation and you know there were I think two staff before and now we've risen that to about five or six. So how so, does yeah. somebody like me come on or come in and actually buy from you? What's that process? How uh, does that yeah, work? Yeah. Well, like quantities? Yeah. Is it buying in bulk? Can I buy um, single items? All that you, sort of stuff. You can buy single items. You can you can come in and just do what we call a casual bag which means that you're not actually a member you're just coming in just you know it's a one-off thing yeah. you don't want to you know, have six bags of stuff, you just want one. Uh, quite often that works for people who have just got a, you know, a particular project that they're doing or, you know, they've got, you know, the, the child at home that needs a, a making space and um, and one bin bag's enough for that. So we, we do a, you know, we have a casual bag, but we also have memberships. And so you can join up for $10 and then uh, pay for an allocation. And so your allocation can be between six and 24 bags yes. uh, or more if you want. So uh, how, what do you mean by allocation? Just well, that just, just so means that you've understand. got like so that we know that we've got in stock a bin bag worth of stuff okay. that you can that you can take. Okay. Um, so six six bin bags um, is a, a normal membership, and uh, it's under a hundred bucks. Um, so it means you can come in and just source whatever the, you like, the, just yeah. fill the bag. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. So yeah. you're not limited to just one, like bottle caps or yeah, bottle no, no, brooms, just, whatever yeah, you yeah, want in that yeah. bag. It's always a good idea to sort of 
bag things within the bin bag because otherwise you know it becomes a bit of a mess. But, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, the um, yeah, so so yeah, six bags or twenty four bags, uh, and that lasts for twelve months. So say if you come in. Uh, now and you join up now or you join up online the cost, and we'll send you out a, what's just so oh, sorry, the cost yeah, to so, join up as a so, membership yeah the, the the one one off uh membership cost is ten dollars uh and then for a six bag membership it's 85 at the moment unfortunately so you is that a one that's that, so that's time. once off yeah so with the six bag membership if i pay 85 dollars i can immediately go and take six bags is yeah, that yeah. That so works? ten dollar join up and then uh 85 dollars so all up your first thing if you wanted six bags would be $95 and then okay. the next year round um, it's just 85 yeah are you limited At the to moment, six I might just say because yeah, diesel's just gone up uh, I'm wanting to pay the staff a little bit more because everything seems to be going up um, so yeah we, we are looking for the first time in 30 years at increasing but it won't be any more than so the concept itself uh, you mentioned the UK earlier mm -hmm. Is it something that's come from overseas into yeah. Australia? Yeah, do you, do I would you say so, know yeah. much about that? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I met one of the guys who said he helped set it up um, earlier in the year. and Set um, up in Australia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he didn't mention being inspired by anywhere else. But it's a concept that looks like so similar. Um, and it, I know for a fact that the, the ones in the US have come from the UK. Yeah. So I can only assume that that's what's happened. Um, it is, I mean, when you Google the concept, it yeah. is out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, yeah. yeah. That, you know, and their name's Scrap Stores, and you say a scrap store to us somewhere in Australia, and like, what? And then you might say, you know, reverse art truck or reverse garbage, and they're like, oh, yes, yes, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. So yeah, the scrap store moniker hasn't sort of come through, you know, name, name hasn't come through, but um, the concept, I think, is there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, workers, so staff, are they employed? Can you the accept moment, volunteers? Got, yeah, we, we do accept volunteers. We're going through the process just now. We used to work quite a lot. Are you looking for volunteers? Yes, definitely. Volunteers we're looking Vol for? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I'll do a we, big yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we had quite a long relationship with corrections. Um, unfortunately... You mean the Department of Corrections? Yeah, the Department yeah. of Corrections. Um, unfortunately, because we've moved a lot of our processing down to Narry Warren, um, people require a car to yeah. get here. You know, it's just, it's just harder to get here. So, unfortunately, that relationship's finished and we're now working with, uh, you know, I work for the Dole and things like that. So, yes. we're hoping that we're able to provide people with you know, um, on, on the job experience and experiences that they can carry through to a, to a work. Um, Something meaningful as well. Yeah, I well, would totally. Think, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. Yeah. Um, it is one of those sort of guilty pleasures I have, you know, getting up and coming to work. It's like, you know, I sort of have several, yeah, as I say, I run a diff at, at, at my own company yep. as well. And so, you know, I'll be sending people out to work doing that, which is also fun. Like, I'll, you know, everything I do is, is quite cool. Um, and uh, but but coming here and just you know being in, in the space, I, I get really excited about you know preparing. I know it sounds really gaggy, but you know just preparing stuff so that people can be really surprised when they come in, or or uh, you know get in, inspired in a particular way about uh, particular things that we have. Um, yeah, it's it's fun work. Yeah, yeah. So Cam, you said earlier that you do deliveries. Yeah, we do. How does Sunday. that so, work? So if I'm a school, yeah. if you're a school, I would deliver uh, a loose parts pod. Yep. Um, so what, what's a pod? A just pod. So, we so know. Um, the the concept of the pod also has come from uh, from the UK, um, and it's yeah loose parts. So it's tires and witches hats and you know decommissioned life jackets, uh, foam. Um, uh, you know, plastic pipes and all sorts yep. of things, and that just goes usually into a shipping container. But we, we, you know, I think these days. So that's the pod, is it? That's the pod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we refill that, um, and we we we'll do that anywhere in Victoria, pretty much. Is there a cost to that? Of yeah, course. Yeah. Can so, I ask how much that yeah, is? Yeah. So a full at the moment. Yeah, full, that's right. Yeah, I know yeah. things a will full, change. Um, yeah. A full pod is two thousand dollars, yep. and that's like a full shipping container filled yep. with stuff. Um, and that lasts for quite a while. It um, would do, I would imagine, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes cardboard and cloth and things like that need to be renewed and yeah. we can do that. Um, we can also advise schools on how they can get hold of that kind of stuff too. In storage? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So the, 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 uh, the pod or the mm. shipping container is left on site? 
Yeah, yeah. So that stays at the school, yeah. and when they feel like they need a, you know, they'll throughout the year things will get played up and played out, yeah. and and that'll just go in the bin. Um, and then when they sort of want things to be returned renewed, and yeah. renewed, then we'll come out. So where do you get your shipping containers from? Are they donated? Well, we, or do you have to buy we, them? We don't tend to do that part of it quite so much. Um, I'll usually just pass on some decals from Royal Wolf or a and yeah. and, and then the school will get that sorted themselves. Shipping containers in Australia, particularly at the moment, are quite scarce. So, mm. um, and that's they're three thousand dollars. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. They're a very expensive uh, way to go about it. Well, they used to be three. <laughs> they used to be I three. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is that you know they're three as a base, and then another three to get a roller door put on the side. They work oh, a lot better right, yeah, when yeah. there's a board base that kids can get in things in and out. But yeah. they've only really got about five makes it accessible. The bell yeah. yeah, yeah. So the bell will go, and they'll chuck everything in, and yeah. they go off to class. And if you haven't got that access. Your like the old yard sports just room or the PE cupboard totally, thing. Totally, yeah, 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 yeah. Your yard becomes a real mess if, it, yeah. if they can't. Um, a bunning shed, on the other hand, you know, for not quite the same size, but a, you know, a decent size is probably about four or five hundred bucks, even six hundred bucks. So, yeah. Um, I think you need to have you know a slab laid, and I think it needs to be properly attached and all that sort of stuff because it's in a schoolyard. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, we can advise on that sort of stuff and point people in the right direction, but we tend to just deal with the uh, with the parts. Yeah. Cool. As a business, is it a viable business? Uh, not really at the moment. No, it's uh, like we're we're you know breaking even, and I haven't sort of paid myself in quite a while. So um, you know, it's a, it's Do you a get funding for me. from um, government or no, councils? not really. Like we will, I think there'll be some attached funding to the work for the doll um, work that we'll yep. be doing. Um, we, you know, when I do a, a loose parts pot or something like that, then then I'll be able to pay myself. Um, but luckily, yeah, I've just got this other organisation that I'm I'm running that, that you know, funds this. Yeah. Well, it funds me, and so therefore I can spend time doing this. Yeah. My art um, uh, business funded my scuba diving business. Yeah. So I'm a dive yeah. instructor, and, right. and uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I understand how that mm, works. Mm. So if you could have anything right now. Mm within the business, what would it be? Like, what would the, 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 the like well, a way of the wand? <laughs> a truck. Our, our truck is currently uh, in pieces. Uh, a delivery repairers. truck. Yeah. We need well, a delivery a collection, truck. collection, collection truck and delivery yeah. what truck. What size yeah. truck? Uh, it's just one of those small Isuzu ones. So it's like just a, a four and a half? Two. Um, I, I, well, it sounds, yeah, four and a half sounds about right. It's Something just a regular a car license. license. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, unfortunately, that uh, the the cooling system went just last month, and uh, every single time I receive a phone call from the mechanic, it's bad news. So it just seems to be sort of one off. Yeah, time to replace it. Yeah, well, it's you know it's being bought at the moment still. So <laughs> it's like and it's a bit um, tricky. Yeah. I'll, I'll maybe we can go for a little bit of a walk around in a moment. But sure. the future, what's the future for for Rat yeah, for right. Reverse Art Trap? Um, so we've got uh, the Ringwood shop, which doesn't uh, it's got two sheds at Ringwood it's quite a centrally placed so it's Greenwood Avenue just above yep. um, uh, Ringwood uh, station um, the second shed which is currently storage will be cleared out and that'll become a tinkering space yep and it'll also uh, house our loose parts sort of um, collection I suppose yeah, so all, like all a storage stuff. point that's yep. right yeah um, the sorting gallery exactly exactly <laughs> yeah um, I'm currently trying to solve or find a solution to uh, ordering, so online ordering. Um, and yes, because the website's pretty basic. Ah, uh, well, yeah, the, we, we can't do deliveries so much because things come and go and they're not consistent. Mm. Um, I can't guarantee that things will be there by the time we come to put them in a box for the, for the order. Um, some things like cardboard cones and things like that are pretty consistent but then there's like uh, the people who would buy things online live in Fish Creek yeah or you know distance yeah that's yeah, away Shepherd. not yeah. close yeah it's not close yeah um, and therefore um, they're paying more for freight than they are for the items themselves mm. um, and to my mind they might as well go to an art shop or the, you the know, tip. The tip, yeah, exactly. Or look at you know source from local industry yeah. themselves. Um, you know they obviously have to put together the range themselves, which is a lot harder. What they tend to do because they do travel for professional development and do travel, and you know there are people in their communities who travel. Yeah. Um, they'll just say, look, parents, friends. Yeah, that's it exactly. Yeah. Um, 
that's the best that we can do at the moment yes. and that's another thing that i need to find a solution for i'm not quite sure how to franchise model that. maybe well, Franchising? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that Rob said before he passed on was that he'd really like, you know, another store in the West. Yeah. Um, over the years. So is the where's the West? What does well, that look like? Well, between either either Geelong or closer into Melbourne. Around the um, airport way. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. that's right. Um, and you know that should be once once we get this sort of ordering system that I'm hoping that will work so well for Ringwood. Um, that should be fairly easy to do. Yeah. Um, and we might need to get another truck and sort of expand on that front. Um, I've also got a few contacts in Bendigo who are very keen on... Yeah, that'd be a know, great location, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? And Re removing far stuff enough out. Of, yeah, yeah. And the local council up there are really supportive of people removing stuff out of out of landfill and working with, um, you know, recycled uh, things. So there's another location that, you know, could work quite well. But, you know, my mind is all about, um, you know, Doing this tinkering program and getting you know after school programs running, yeah. uh, doing. So who um, runs those for you, or well, who will? Will you I get will. volunteers? I'm, I'm an ex-primary school teacher, yeah. and STEM specialist, so I'll probably do that. You know, most of my. You have that demeanour as a teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> most, most of my best memories of teaching have been around um, providing just a, a wealth of resources, usually from Reverse Art Truck, and saying to kids here's the thing, go do it. And yep. um, we did it with uh, a do-nothing machine, which involved lots of cogs, and uh, we had some syringe pumps with tubes, and so they were able to do yep. hydraulics. and Like a um, small machine, small totally, engine type stuff. Totally, yep. Yeah, um, and then another one we did was uh, just, it was about moving force. And so we watched a few YouTube videos of, uh, you know, the Honda Accord ad and a few other things. And those guys have done a few projects before they did the Honda Accord ad. So it's like just moving energy from one part, you know, one place yeah. to another. And we had a whole lot of trestle tables set up just with stuff, you know, and we had old billiard balls and we had, you know, um, pipes and gutters and, you know, uh, all sorts of trays with water and, you know, whatever I could sort of think could be a thing. Um, and then it was to fun. Get people thinking. Yeah, yeah. totally. Then it was the fun just to sort of say, go. And then it was, me being able to sort of sit back to see whether they caught the thread of what it was that the things that I'd had, you know, there's a piece of string and there's a candle and, you know, the little sign that says, ask Cam if you need yeah. matches sort of thing. And, you know, then, so suddenly you had kids stringing up string with a, a little bit of mass here that they could sort of, you know, that, to keep it all taut and all sorts of different things and, and things that I hadn't even considered. When um, um, my daughter was, I think sixth grade it was, mm -hmm. she had to make a small engine Mm. And uh, so this is going back 12 years and we ended up using, making a rubber band doorstop. Yeah, right. A rubber band and yeah, put yeah. it on one, yeah. but put it on the ground and it yeah. would shoot across the floor of the hotel. Yeah. It was great fun. Yeah, yeah, I can really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. absolutely awesome. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about this site here. The, the building itself, is that donated? That's a council building yeah. um, and they're really, really supportive of us. Yeah. Uh, many, many years ago. Did they, they pay for power and, and uh, water? I pay, and... For, I pay for power and water. Yeah. Um, but the, the shed is, you know, the, you know, when the lights go out, I ask and they... You know, put the put them back. Oh, that's good. Sorry, <laughs> no, it's right. uh, there was a light out, and now it's uh, it's back. Um, so, how long have you been in this building? Uh, I think Rob's been here for maybe. Oh well, I suppose with COVID, that's five years. I was going to say yeah. three, but that's five. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and yeah, he was behind the uh, the netball courts uh, in Cranbourne, I think, prior to that, and before that, he was just at Ringwood. So, there's um, two sites now. Two sites now, two stores. The other side is at uh, Green Greenwood Avenue, seventeen Greenwood Avenue, Ringwood. Yep. Um, just up the. Up the is that the same size? So I haven't been into no, that one. No, much smaller. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um, but and that's know, open during the in, week, isn't it? It Didn't is. I yeah. That, so that's open from Tuesday to Friday, nine to five. Yeah. And Saturday, nine to one. And staffed yeah. by volunteers or paid uh, employees. One, one paid employee at yep. the moment. We're hoping that we can supplement that with a with a um, volunteers volunteer. people. <laughs> yeah, because. How many I, volunteers would you like? Um, well, uh, probably one one person at Ringwood. Um, I'm hoping that we can have three or four here because we'll be doing a lot of pro 
processing and preparing. Would that so mean you'll be open all week then here? Or yeah, no, not plan? necessarily. No, no, we'll, we'll just have this as a space that's just for processing. Um, yeah. And then Friday, Saturday, it'll be open as the store. Yeah. Um, we just, you know, everything, you know, when you're, when you're on an assembly line and you have the thing that comes through or the, you know, the, the thread comes off the bobbin or whatever it happens yep. to be and you chuck the bobbin in, in the barrel, you know, yep. but then the guy over here has, you know, a, a tube and he chucks it in there as well. And then someone else chucks some rubbish in and some, you know, and, yep. and, and so our drums need to be processed. So we sort of upend them, go through them all. Have you got some here? Is there um, anything here that we can yeah, have yeah, a stick we can have and a look at? It's a bit of an OHMS nightmare back there at the moment. But, well, if uh, that, that's you know. the case, I'll, I'll, <laughs> um, I'll let you go. I'll... Yeah, it's like, you know, there, there are barrels there that have, um, you know, uh, bits of uh, rubber and things like that. And yeah. so, you know, we don't tend to put the rubber all in one drum that teachers have to sort of find their way through. We'll yeah. have, you know, coloured rubber there and, you know, rubber mats there and rubber strips there. And, you know, it's just about sort of the processing part, I suppose, is just about separating those kinds of things. Um, and every now and then yeah. we get something like feathers. So we have a down company that we go to and not everyone likes to get their hands into feathers, so um, well, yeah, quite I'm, heavy, I'm aren't they? well, yeah, 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 that's right, a ton of feathers, yeah. yeah well, um, for you to saw yeah, 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 yeah. Dad joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I'm the bunny that puts on gloves and you know puts them into bags, and so you know when you've got a bag of feathers, it's not quite so smelly or you know um, concerning for people. I mean, they've been through a dryer that heats them up and all that kind of stuff. Like it's what goes in bedding and pillows and stuff. Yeah. So you know, there's no biggie, but. Um, a lot of people have a visceral sort of dislike of feathers, so yeah. we have a few things like that. You know, polystyrene. A lot of people don't like dealing with large quantities of polystyrene. Just the sound of it and the movement of and it. And then and breathing like it in and that. Well, like it, you know, it's all like it's all in you know solid. Oh, you got sheets. Pieces. Yeah. yeah, sheets of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like it comes in in big bags, and mm. not everyone likes to touch that or listen to it. So you know, I'm the one who goes in and, uh, and sorts that out. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about we go for a quick walk around, and um, then so, I'll uh, let yeah, you with the So we've got. Um, so we're going to have a walk like around corks. now, folks. So uh, yeah, this is the store. So we've got um, things like corks. Um, industries when they when they close down or move on, um, such as film. Um, there's often byproducts from that. Um, nurseries that close down. Obviously, loads and loads of corks. Uh, party shops from time to time have things that don't sell quite so well, so we end up with those things. Um, you know, we end up with shoes. Um, this is from cricket balls. So once they've sealed the, the leather on the cricket ball, they have a stamp that sort of comes through and, and takes it out. So Goodness me, so I've never seen that before. So the rings from there. Yeah. Um, webbing. So this is uh, medical webbing. Yep. Um, amazing machines that put that together. Um, What's that so used for? Um, oh, for casts. Yeah, yeah. casts and things, yeah. Uh, you know, this is the outside bits of sporting nets. Uh, this is just from, um, I think there's a sticker or, or a, an adhesive, and so this just comes off. The like back. a double sided Super tape backing. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just something that Rob, my predecessor, just, you know, happened to be in a factory, looked at the stuff, and was like, Are you throwing that out? And mm. they said, Yes, so, you know. So what are uh, the big sellers? Uh, well, this is quite popular. Um, I'd say probably at the moment, transparent bottles. So COVID hit and um, there was a company. They look new. In, yeah, well, they are. <laughs> there was a company in uh, Frankston who um, pivoted uh, with COVID. They thought, right, the world's ending. We need to start making hand sanitizer. Um, so they got loads and loads of bottles in, uh, and then did hand sanitizer, I think for a month or something, and then realized that that wasn't really, you know, the world hadn't ended. Um, so then they had all these bottles that they just left in their car park, um, and sort of invited anyone to come and get, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, with these things, you know, they, they have a go. Uh, it's not worth the money to do anything with it afterwards. You know, someone has to sit on a phone and try and find a market for this kind of thing. And it's not really going to be, you know, it's not in their wheelhouse to do. So it's cheaper and easier for them just to sort of trash it all or chuck it back into recycling. So Perfect for craft and art. Totally, totally. Look, you, can, yep. you can see through that so you can see different coloured 
fluids and you know um so really useful cut it stuff. stick yeah. it paste it totally yeah, yeah. all yeah. bits so those are moving really quickly at the moment yeah um, absolutely yeah, awesome bright colored or uh cardboard's always really popular um, and it can be just really simple cardboard too so again this is from a company that just you know this is a, a thing that when the things that they use are manufactured. This is the separator in the box, and it's it's a really useful piece of cardboard. So otherwise, it would have just been been gone. You know, it takes um takes a certain amount of energy to recycle all that stuff, and so if you can get an extra use out of it, then that's really good, and it's uh, something that's very popular. Uh, doing framing. So this is all the framing cards. So if you can imagine the frame, uh, it gets cut out of this. There's a little um, it's on, a, on an angle on a camber there because um, that's the middle bit where the picture is and then the frame sort of you know it's the what do you call it that, that goes around the, the picture within the frame anyway, I understand yeah yeah this is uh, all cropped off the end of um, uh, like a plastic film uh, so they've got a bolt of the film and they chop it to, to size for the machine and so these are the little bits that come off the end this is uh, webbing and um, all sorts of different cloth manufacturing um, give us these. Same with uh, these things. That's from, uh, they do blankets and, and things, I think. Um, and they're all different colours. Like this, I just think is, you know, they, I think they do that intentionally so that we'll come along and go, wow, that looks amazing. And, and use do you have competitions, anything for artists and students to think. use your products and come up with something wonderful for a something at the end it's often hard to get people to show us what they do with it because it's sort of done and then the kids take it home yeah um i'm hoping with our sort of out outsourcing programs and the work that we'll be doing at festivals and things like that we'll be able to get a bit more of that it might be a funding opportunity there totally. too yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally um this was a fabulous art project that this young man did just before COVID, and unfortunately it didn't sort of go where he wanted it to go, um, I think, because COVID hit and no one could actually be in the spaces where these things were seen. But the idea was that he set up a, a, a scaff and then put these different different cylinders through the scaff and made a big lion, which was just tremendous. But then you know, the council sort of finished that project, finished that funding and said, you've got to take it away. And Move on. Where's we ended, it going? We ended up Back here. Yeah, I yeah. think it was a bit of a nightmare for him for a little while. But, uh, well, it's awesome. If you've got something that you want to say to the outside world, what would it be? The final words from Cam and um, Rat. Uh, just, uh, I think um, one of the key things that I think is really important about this place and places like it is that idea of abundant, low, low cost, financial cost, um, uh, resources it, it unlocks untold creativity so no matter what you're doing it's always a good idea to have a spitball or have some experience just doing things solving problems with odd shapes and and I think you know, get amongst it everybody yeah I really appreciate it Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, thank you thank you time I will send you all the information all the links and uh, hopefully we'll get some members Thanks, Cam. Thank, Thank you, you, my friend. Thank you.